up everybody, welcome back. Well, we've got uh, the C15S that some of you might have seen a little walk around video of. Back, actually it's been here for ages, it's been standing in the paint room. It belongs to a friend of mine. Uh, if you remember, I redid the engine, he sort of did the rest. I made little things like that and what have you. So what he wants now is to change the wheels. I personally said don't because they are the original wheels so it's a bog standard bike but what are you going to do? So for the front wheel we have got this which is a Boltaco. He's had it rebuilt onto a nice new rim uh, 21 inch because of course the front wheels on these things are weird sizes but anyway we've got a 21 inch so he's going to be able to get to uh, any amount of tyres. I think it'll just fit in with the tyre on with the mud guard as it is. The main job for this is uh, the wheel spindle. A, it's incredibly long for some reason. I guess what it would be in beta forks probably on a bull tackle which have thick, thick uh, clamps whereas the BSA ones are very small. And it's slightly smaller diameter. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to have to make up two sleeves for either side. Fortunately it's the clamp up forks. Uh, two sleeves to bring it up to this diameter and also we'll probably put a collar on them to get them to space right. And then I'm going to shorten this and this is just slightly over 7 16 So what we'll do is we'll put it in See exactly how long it needs to be and how long a threaded portion. Then I'll cut it to length, turn it down that very slight bit for the threaded portion and do it 7 16th fine thread. So that's for that end and presumably he'll be getting the tyre for it. For the back end we've got what I think is, oh god I'm getting old, a Rickman hub. Tell you what. Let's see if I can keep me in focus. As I say, I think it's a Rickman hub. Anybody that knows different, let me take the brake plate out. There's the brake plate by the way, if that helps. Anyone who knows different, if you can tell me what it is, then that would be very good. But there it is. You can see it's a sort of semi-conical. There's a little cone at that side for the brake, but the rest of it is more like a, what's the word? What's the word? Oh, it'll come to me. Not thimble, but it sounds like that. Anyway, the problem with this is, let me turn it around again. I don't know if you can see if you're at the right angle, but the sprocket is really right out here. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna get the chain line. The, the hub is uh, virtually the same size as that one, it's like six and a half inches wide uh, so it'll fit in and the centre line is going to be about right but what's wrong is this sprocket is all the way over here. So what I'm thinking of doing is, tell you what, let me zoom you in and I can explain this better. Alright, you'll notice this sprocket's got a million bolts holding it on. It's also got a very thick flange that it bolts to on the hub. So what I'm thinking is what I'll do with it is what I used to see quite often God this is a long time ago when I used to go to Croft near Darlington to watch the road racing on the old uh, Air Force base there and a lot of the lads there who rode at several different short circuits so they needed different gearing in order to save time they'd have two or three different lengths of chain and the sprockets would be split so that all they had to do is take the bolts out and the sprocket would come off in two pieces go back on they didn't have to take the wheel out and dismantle the brakes and all the rest of it well you can't really do that if you've only got about four bolts but here say I've got how many two four six eight ten I've got twelve bolts so there's going to be six bolts holding each half on so if I split it I can put it on the back of this flange even with a little spacer and I think I'll still be alright for the chain uh, if not 
I don't know. Then again, of course, this is just from eyeballing it and measurements. Might find when I get it in and get the wheel centered that actually it's not too bad. But I think it's going to be a problem. So anyway, let's start on the front wheel. Now I've taken the wheel up, put the end caps back on. Uh, one point if you're working on the, one of these to notice is that the bolts in the end cap are not in exactly in the centre. The end caps are slightly bigger on one side than the other. So you can put them on the wrong way around. And then what you'll find is there'll be a step. So let's uh, put this wheel in. Now I haven't decided yet which side the brake is going to go because the Beza has a, a boss on there that slides into a groove in the brake plate and this of course is one to take to take a torque arm. So we'll put it in, see what's what, might have to turn it round. Oh, this isn't going to fit either. Damn! No, that is not going to fit. Not unless we mill off. Not unless we mill that off. Let me measure it. See how much I can, I can take up on that. All right. I just noticed this. I took the brake plate out to put the wheel in, and. Uh, with this in to clear that side, this boss here is going to be up against the brake plate because the brake plate is going to stick out here. So we're going to have to put the wheel in the other way around. So let me do that. I'll just check the wheel is centered 7 eighths of an inch from the fork to the rim on both sides. So now what I need to know is how much room we've got here. All right. Now at the edge we've got half an inch. Now don't forget the brake plate is uh, sloped. So we've got half an inch at the edge. How much have we got there in the centre? See if I can get a, a measure on that. How are we going to do this? Uh, Excuse me. That's nine sixteenths and a sixteenth for the ruler. So, see, we've got a date and point here. So, from there to the inside of that is five eighths. Okay, let's take the wheel out and see if we can convert that to some reasonable measurements. Now the way I've measured this is to use this as our data because that's what we measured to from the fork, both near the edge and in the centre. So I put a straight edge across that and measured down to there and it came to 3 and 13 sixteenths. Okay? Now at the edge we had an extra, we had a half inch. So if we had enough if we had a, add an half inch to 3 and 13 sixteenths, half inch being 8 sixteenths, we get 4 and 5 sixteenths. And if we add 5 eighths to it in the center, we get 4 and 7 sixteenths. Right? So when I put that on, I did the same, put a straight edge across, measured the edge from the bottom to the edge is 4 and 1 16th and we've actually got 4 and 5 16th worth of space so that is not going to touch the fork but in the centre that is 4 and 9 16th and the datum 
plus our 5 8 is only 4 and 7 16 so we're thicker by an eighth but we have this boss here and I can take an eighth off this without it getting too far down so I think we're all right we'll take an eighth off and that'll put this up against the fork and uh, we'll be clear on the other side and we'll be centered so it will fit but I've got to machine this now before I machine this of course if it was mine I'd do it but it's not mine so I've got to phone up and talk to Bill whose bike it is who bought all this and said do you mind if I machine an eighth off that because if I can't the wheel doesn't fit so I suppose it's a bit of a no-brainer so let me do that all right I got the go-ahead from Bill so I've milled an eighth of an inch off there which just gives me clearance and the wheel's in all right so all I've got to do now is for this side the sleeve just needs to be the uh, the length of that and for this other side it um, let me unfasten this oh, can you see that let me zoom you in here and for this side it needs to be that thickness and it goes in there a little bit but I can get in to measure that and uh, everything will be hunky dory so let me turn up those two sleeves and uh, then the only other thing we've got to think of of course is the uh, brake arm and the torque arm for it I think what I'll probably end up doing is uh, I bet you can't see that can you focus is uh, now that will stick excuse me is make this so that uh, God I don't know where I'm going to put a torque arm it's going to go up there I might put it this no, I can't put it this side okay so it's torque I'm going to go up to the mudguard stay and then I guess I can put the if the arms out there I can put the cable attachment onto that so that will work and we'll be all right okay so let me go and do a little bit of lathe work now for this side we're going to use the same procedure we're going to use this edge here as our measuring point now it's a bit difficult to get in here so what I've done if I had gauge blocks I could do this accurately is I found something that will go in there which I want it did go in there there it is. so that goes in there like thus so what I'll do is measure the thickness of this and then that's how far we are from that edge to the inside of the fork so now let me take the wheel out I'll measure these I'll take the wheel out and I'll show you something inside it now inside here there should be one of these but there's only one came with the wheel that just goes in all that is is like we've seen with all the other wheels is it carries the forces right through on the inner race so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure down to that from this and then I'm going to measure the thickness of that and when I make this spacer I'm going to duplicate this on the end of it so that goes in glasses off so I can see and we are at that is three eighths so I have three eighths and then the thickness of that and then the thickness of those two rulers and that's from the fork to the center 
the inner race of that bearing. So let me add all that up and then I can make the piece. So there is the uh, spacing piece made and as you can see I've, I've matched the end more or less to that, put the little slope on and uh, that goes into that oil seal nice and tightly. So let's put the wheel in. Right, so that's got it in, both spaces in. Fine. Of course, I'm not thinking clearly because all that palaver about making this 7 16th, it's a 12 millimeter bolt and I've got the 12 millimeter nut to go on it and I've got a 12 millimeter by 1.5 die. So all I've got to do is shorten it and thread it for the nut. So I'll go and do that. I've shortened the uh, wheel spindle and uh, re-threaded it, put the nut on, so that's all right. So we're all set. So the next thing we need is torque arm for this, for the brake plate. Now I was thinking originally of taking it up to these uh, mudguard steer mounts, but the little studs that are in there are actually fixed into the forks and they're not long enough for me to get anything at all into there. So I had to look for an alternative. So let me zoom you in a little bit and I'll show you what my alternative is. So this is what I've decided on. You'll see there's a lug here, there's one on the other side as well. Uh, it's probably for a different type of mudguard stay. So I thought to myself, okay, I'll uh, make a plate to bolt from that to that. But that would probably still have allowed that to move, so that wasn't good enough. I really need two points for this which I would have used up there, further up. So the other place there was a bolt was down here. Two bolts there, I've taken one out. So, what I've done is I have made this. See, that goes on there. And that will go in there. Now that might be alright on its own, but I'm I'm not really uh, that sure about it. So what I'm going to do is drill and tap this uh, this lug on here. So let me tighten this up so that it's the way it's going to be. And what I've put on the back of here, I'm not going to be able to get a pencil in anyway, I don't think, is um, a little bit of masking tape so that I can mark it a little easier. So that's going to go on like that. As I say, it's it's pretty firm as it is, but won't hurt to have an extra one there. So what I'm going to do now is mark around the back of there. Except you can't really do it. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to drill a hole in here. Then I'm going to drill and tap that and fasten that done. Then the next thing we need to do is to make a piece here for the cable mount. All right, so let me uh, drill this and tap it and then we'll come back. So the finished piece looks like this. Well, I say finished, it's not actually finished yet, but the actual, this part of it is finished. So that goes on there. getting blooming magnetic. That's going to go in there. So that's all rigid. Now then the next thing we need is 
is an anchor point for the cable. So what I'm going to do, I've left a gap behind here actually, which is enough for another piece of this eighth. I'm going to make it come out here like that and actually come to here. So it'll have that little uh, bend in it and that should be quite strong enough and then we'll turn up a piece like a little thimble for the, the adjuster to go into. So let me uh, go and get some eighth, measure that and we'll get this bit made. Now uh, here's the completed piece so that is going to go on there like that As you know we have that one to go in the bottom so that one will screw up into there nut will go on there and then what I've made up for the cable uh, stop here is this piece so it's threaded to go in there it's got a flat on and it's got a slot for the cable so that's going to go in there like so actually I should probably have uh, this on before I put the thing on. So that's going to go on there. Whoops, excuse my head. Like that. Just that tightly. When the time comes, then uh, oh. screw that in. somehow and then I actually managed to uh, find my friend Mike's a bull tackle brick cable so that is going to go in through there put up the thing goes below that goes down into there and there we go all set and ready to go. There's an adjuster on the uh, the handlebar end for this. So that's that all done. The only thing that remains now is to put the tire on here. So I'll uh, I'll do that, and then you can see the uh, completed ensemble. Now, of course, wouldn't be a project without a problem. And uh, usual thing, you get so carried away with stuff. I never noticed that when I put this on. The nut for the uh, tightening bolt, because it's it's got the um, recess here in the spline, so you can't put it on with uh, with that there. I couldn't get the nut on for this, so it was so close. What I did was I welded the nut onto here, because we just see it will go in, and everything is fine because the nut goes away from that when the lever's pulled. So, I might have to ease a little bit off, but for the moment that'll go on there, and then that will go in, in there like that, and tighten up. And then we've got plenty of movement. Okay. There it is, one bull taco wheel in a C15. It works. Everything fits. All right, now then to look at the back. So I've taken the back wheel out and put the rear wheel in. 
but it's not going to fit. Uh, it's about centered, but let me zoom you in here. Show you this side first. The hub is pressed right up against the swinging arm there. And that's up against the plate. So, you know, it, the frid, the actual tubular part of the swinging arm sticks out even more. And over this side, the brake plate is right up against the tube. I've got a little bit of space, but it's right up against it. I mean, I could scallop that a little bit and get that side to fit, but the other side. Oh, I don't think so. Plus, let me move you around here again. The chain line is about right there, which is basically on top of that flange. I think if it was there, I don't know. No, it's. To get there I'd have to come over a little bit and then that would have this right up against there. So basically, I mean, we're only talking half an inch, something like that, but I don't see anywhere because of the shape of the hub. And that's what it is, you see, although it's the same size as the BSA one, the BSA one immediately starts to, to thin out, to slope away from the swinging arm, both sides. And on this side it has... Uh, the speedo drive so that the hub itself is is further in so although this will fit in between the two arms it won't really fit into the swinging arm itself so another chapter bill see what he wants to do so there it is all done Boltarco front wheel BSA back wheel at least they both start with a B um, who knows what will happen with it next but uh, that's as much as we can do for now. So thanks for watching, folks. Thanks for subscribing and sending comments and all the rest. And uh, go off and enjoy yourselves.